Uh-oh, would you looky there? Diesel's getting low in the mill. Time to fill it up. This may seem simple to some of you, but my, this is nice. I tell you what, got me laughing here, kind of smiling for a change. This is pretty nice right here. No more holding up cans or none of that stuff. Friends, I am finishing up that red oat from the last video. And I'm going to do a little demonstration here. This is not the best candidate for this method due to this rot over here, but a lot of people asked me about quarter sawing, so I thought I'd show kind of one of the ways I do it here at the mill. It's a little bit different than most people do it. So if you're wondering what this wood's doing, I'll turn side guard over here on the mill. The reason is. I'm doing something my buddy Robert down in Alabama demonstrated at the Georgia meetup about three years ago. And uh, I do their method, but I do it just a little bit different. And uh, this is what you call the reverse roll quarter sawing method. The main gist of it is to take every piece of timber out of a log that's left over after quarter sawing the traditional way and get quarter sawing lumber out of it. And to do that on a band mill, you gotta turn it up like this at an angle. And there's a little bit of waste that happens, but that waste is kind of offset by the increase in price that quarter saw lumber brings. For example, wide oak uh, flat saw boards, you know, number one grade might bring about $4 a board foot here in Tennessee. If it's quarter sawed, you might get $5.50 or $6 depending upon how wide it is. So it's worth your time to do this, and this is red oak, which is, you know, the same pricing as far as that goes. It's worth your time to do it because the lumber's more stable, more people ask for it, and it's better money. It just takes a little bit longer, but that's, you know, I'm not a high production sawmill. Even if you are high production sawmill, I still think it's worth your time because you get more value out of it and better lumber at the end of the day. So you turn it up on its side and you want to get this grain where it's running 90 degrees with the face of the board. And what that means is when you look at the end of the board, and I'll put a visual up here, you got the grain running straight up and down to the face of the board right there. You got your tangential plane and your ray plane going on right there. 
your ray plane is going to be the face of the board where you see the medullary rays the tangential plane is the side pieces quarter sawn wood does not move much at all the width of it on the medullary plane moves just a little during seasonal expansion and contraction and even during kiln drying the thickness moves more so uh, that's one reason I like making tables or farm tables out of quarter sawn white oak or red oak rather it really doesn't matter it's the same principle no matter which one it is and it also goes for all timber as far as that goes coarse on wood is more stable i like doing tables with it because the top of the table the width won't change hardly any at all your breadboard ends have a lot easier time keeping your boards flat than they do from it moving this way and it's really nice so uh this is a method of doing that it takes a little bit longer like i was saying and as you can see the way i got it turned up i'll make a cut right here and i'll bring the camera in will come off the top right here and make a triangle and then the next two boards will be quarter sawn boards now you are left with edges that are kind of at a slope they're not straight up and down to the board but that's no big deal once this stuff dries you run it through an edger or whatever you're doing with it clean up the sides and there's your nice pretty board it looks a lot better than what this would be this would have to be riff sawn if i sawed it the way it is which means the grain is not 90 degrees it's less than 90 degrees Riff sawn is better than plain sawn, in my opinion. It's more stable, but quarter sawn is the king as far as being stable. And when it comes to oak, you want to quarter saw it because you got those nice medullary rays that are showing on top. So I'm going to shut up. I hope that was about as clear as mud, guys. As I make these cuts, I'll bring the camera in and show you what's going on. We'll probably get one or two five quarter boards, then I'll flip it over at that point. My reference face is established. It's going to be a whole lot easier clamping it because right now, I'm clamping it on an angle here at the bottom, so it's not really that stable. It's in there pretty good, but I did have to cut the sawmill off and bring in a coal board to kind of brace it so I could get my brace in there. If I had another person up here, it'd be a whole lot easier. Speaking of that, my dad retires, I think in about 30 days, and he will be coming on board here out of the woods when he retires about three or four days a week, so look for my dad on camera sooner than later. So one more thing here, I get a lot of requests about t-shirts, about two or three times a year I do an order, and the last one was almost 400 t-shirts. And guys, I appreciate the orders, and it was really nice, but my goodness, it was a lot of work. I spent a whole week in the house just packaging t-shirts and getting them out the door. So having said that, it looks like we're going to partner up with a new company that's going to handle the t-shirts for us. They're going to use our logos and make up some new designs and there's no pre-orders anymore. So if you want a t-shirt, you can go over to that website, click on one order, and here it comes to you. No waiting around, which is nice for you and nice for me because I don't have to fool with packaging and all that stuff. And you guys don't have to wait three or four weeks for a pre-order. So that's going to happen sooner than later. Hopefully before Christmas, we'll have that going on the website. It's not going to be my website. It's going to be a different website, but they're good people. And I think it's going to work out good for us. So stay, uh, so stand by on that. I get tongue twisted here sometimes, guys. I'm trying to tell you guys what's going on. Sometimes there's like 300 tapes per video because I lose my train of thought here. I'm trying to talk to the camera. So anyways, let's get this done. Once this is over with, I think we got another red oak to put on here and it's already 1.30. I need to get going because I got to pick up Bruno at three o'clock. Not enough hours in the day and we got to make some pallets. I'm going to show you guys how I make pallets here for the lumber. So that will help some of you guys out as well. So I think that's about all I got to say right now. All right, let's get sawed. Quarter sawn reverse roll method. Take one.
All right, friends, that went pretty fast. It takes a little bit longer than riff sawing, but you get a better product out of it. We've got one, two, three, four, five. And these are five quarter on the thickness. We've got, what, six inches right there. These are about, that one's six. This one right here is five. Back here on the back is six, so not too bad. You know, one, two, three, four, five, that's about, gosh, 34 board feet, something like that, just average guess. Now you're gonna see when I take off this sawdust, we have perfectly quarter sawn boards. The grain is 90 degrees to the face, and we have fantastic medullary rays coming through here on the face. I can already see them through the dust right there. Now for you guys out there that run sawmills and you do quarter saw, and try this method with your last four quarters from your timber after you do, it got tongue tied right there. After you do your traditional method, do this on those four quarters that's left, and I think you'll be happy with the results. And uh, I am, guys, it works every time. I've never had a failure doing that reverse roll quarter sawing. Works really good. Let's get these cleaned off and take a look at them. Fantastic.